morning, Robert. Hello, Bob. Yes, good to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, right. How are you? Ready. Yeah. You having a good day? Yes, not too bad. It's nice and sunny, so that's that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Well, we've, uh, we've had rain. <laughs> uh, well, we're, I, we're about, it we're was about raining earlier. It, it was raining earlier, but it's sunny. It's yeah. fairly sub, sunny okay. now, so that's that's good. Mm-hmm. Where, whereabouts are you um, in in the in the UK? I'm quite some way away from St Albans. Um, I'm mm-hmm. in the West Country. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Good. So, um, the questions that you left. Um, they're, they're the sort of questions that are, um, I suppose, impossible to answer in the sense that, um, you know, sometimes um, there is no answer. It's, uh, it's just the way that um, Jehovah God is arranging things. So one of the things you asked is, you know, why, why does um, God include the 144,000 with Jesus? Um, as part of that arrangement, um, I looked into it, and I can't really find um, uh, a light bulb answer, um, other than that that's what the scriptures tell us, and that's how he where? is organising things. Where you're talking about chapter thirty-three, paragraph three, which says after the wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as king for a thousand years. During that time, he, that's Jesus, and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth, that means the ones resurrected to the earth and the ones who've survived Armageddon, to become perfect and sinless. The book says that Jesus will be working with the 144,000 co-rulers who in their priestly yeah. office will be helping the humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Where's that in the Bible? I mean, it's a perfectly reasonable question. If you meet uh-huh. a Mormon or a Seventh-day Adventist and they tell you you've got to go to the temple and do temple ceremonies or you ought to keep the dietary laws and uh, go to a building on, on Saturday because of the Sabbath, you, you've got a perfect right to say to that Mormon or Seventh-day Adventist, show me that in the Bible and I'll uh-huh. obey Jehovah God. But if you uh-huh. don't show it to me from the Bible, then shut up. Stop yakking. You know, prove it from the Bible or shut up. Okay, so and we're it's in a chapter, perfectly reasonable... chapter 33, yeah. and um, where, which paragraph are we looking at? Paragraph 3. Paragraph 3, yes. okay. It's, it, it, the, my, my problem is that the 144,000 will be helping Jesus to uh-huh. make those people resurrected to the earth and those who yeah. have survived Armageddon on the earth to become perfect and sinless. Yes. Now, my Bible says that Jesus forgives sins, Mark 2.10, but that you uh-huh. may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. I honestly don't see anywhere in the Bible where Jesus needs help from anyone else regarding the forgiveness of sins. Okay. So, um, the Bible speaks about um, those that go to heaven as being kings and priests. Um, we get that from the book of Revelation. And the the kingdom arrangement, which is the means by which God will bring the earth back to its original condition, is administered by Jesus, who becomes king of the kingdom, and those who are called anointed, the heirs, uh, to that promise, and they join him in that arrangement, and then those benefits are enjoyed by those of us that uh, would be living on the earth at that time. Sorry, what's your point, Bob? I'm just explaining uh, how we um, explain the the point that you were that you were asking. The forgiveness of sin. I don't want an explanation. I want I want scripture. Where okay. does it say that Jesus needs help from people who've been turned from humans into non-human spirit creatures to forgive sins and how well, precisely the forgiveness, will the... the forgiveness of sins is something that only god is able to do so 
but but you, we, but your book says that the hundred and forty four thousand will help Jesus making people sinless. During that time he, that's Jesus, and his hundred and forty four thousand co rulers, that's people uh -huh. like Judge Rutherford and Fred Franz and previous governing yeah. body members who've died, they're turned into non human spirit creatures. They're in heaven. But yeah. somehow, despite the fact they're in heaven as non human spirit creatures, they're gonna help humans on the earth, that means humans resurrected to the earth and those few who've survived Armageddon to become perfect yeah. and sinless. Sinless yes. means without sin. It, As people it have sin, sin, it means sinless, sin. they will get rid of the sin. Now, I, do, I believe that God alone forgives sins. I don't believe that's that right. God Certainly. plus 144,000. That's, 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 that's clearly what the Bible teaches. But to then return somebody to perfection and to... I don't know, tidy up the earth and all the mess that um, mankind has made. I'm yeah. not interested. Honest, I'm serious. I'm not interested in the mess on the earth. I'm only okay. interested in the word sinless. Uh -huh. During that time, he, that's Jesus, and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Now, sinless uh -huh. means without sin. So as people are resurrected to the earth with sin, Jesus and the 144,000 will make them sinless i.e. remove their sins. Why does Jesus need help from anyone else regarding the forgiveness of sins? And how will the 144,000 help Jesus to forgive sins? Which Bible verse says this? I would have to look that for you. That's, um, I'm, I'm in, in my own simple way, Robert, I am trying to, uh, you know, make, mm. make the point and, um, clear to you so I mean we we speak about sin as though it is um, an entity on its own um, because we are imperfect we um, have inherited that from our parents who inherited it from their parents and we go right back to Adam and Eve where those original um, couple sinned and brought imperfection into the human race and that has carried on throughout eternity down to down to us the forgiveness of sins and the return to imperfection is something that only God is able to do as as the creator as as the mastermind of all of this um, and yeah, he on. has you're, you're not addressing my point if Jesus alone, obviously in covenant with the Father, and the benefits of that covenant are mediated to us by the Holy Spirit, Hebrews 9, 12 to 15, that's the new covenant. If Jesus alone makes people sinless, then Jesus doesn't need 144,000 non-human spirit creatures like Mr. Lett and Mr. Hurd when they pass on, or Judge Rutherford and Fred Franz to help him forgive the sins of those resurrected to the earth. It clearly is talking... So do, you not, do you not think that the scriptures indicate that Jesus and the 144,000 will be together and make up this heavenly government? That's not my question. That's totally irrelevant. That's going on with a complete sidetrack. I'm only interested in the word sinless. During that time, that's the millennium, so, he, that's Jesus... So, no, let me, let, me, let me finish. He, yeah. Jesus, and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless sinless that's all i'm interested in why does jesus need help making people sinless could you explain that to me which bible verse says that jesus needs help from other people to make people sinless during this millennium i i don't know right. i don't know um it's in their priestly office because um firstly as priests christians are king priests which you mentioned but their well, priestly those, office. Uh, those that make up the, the heavenly class. Yes. I'm about to quote 1 Peter 2 9, which explains that their priesthood of Christians is one of praise. As priests, Christians don't go around forgiving other people of their sins. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy mm -hmm. nation, his own yep. special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Royal yeah. priesthood. Royal is king, 
priesthood is obviously a reference to Christians acting as priests. Mm -hmm. And it's got nothing to do with making people sinless or forgiving other people of their sins. That's what the Catholics teach. The Catholics have the institution of the papacy. They claim that Jesus gave Peter the keys. The, the present Pope is the successor of Peter. He still got those keys and he gives that authority, that papal authority to the bishops who give it to the priests. And the priests have these seven sacraments. And yeah. Jesus forgives you in Catholicism. If you say to a priest, if you say to a Catholic priest, oh, you believe that you can forgive sins, he'll correct you and say, no, no, I don't forgive sins. I work with Jesus. I help Jesus to forgive sins. Yeah. Because in the Catholic so we, system, Jesus we, alone we, can't we, forgive sins. I'll, I'll he does it through you. the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church, administered by the Catholic priesthood. You're saying exactly the same thing. Um, in the Watchtower... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, Robert. In my own simple way, I'm trying to um, explain... I, I'm trying to read the Watchtower. But I'm, I'm trying to explain God. the Watchtower's teaching to you. In the Watchtower of the 15th of March, 2012... Yeah. Page 23, paragraph 12. So, uh, it talks uh, about uh, this priestly uh, function. Robert, let, let me just um, in, in, interrupt you there. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased that you've, you've rung us and um, that you're interested in what our literature teaches, etc. And we would, we would love to um, help you and discuss with you what the scriptures say um it, it it's but you've said you don't know what the scriptures say you said these questions are unanswerable no i said i don't know the i couldn't give you a scripture to the specific point that um that you were that you were making well i can please go ahead yeah let me just read the watchtower for the 15th of march 2012 first it's page 23, paragraph 12. This explains what the Watchtower's position is on the glorified sons of God, which is another reference for the 144,000. Yeah? Yes. Have I got that yes. right? Yeah. Yes. And it's talking about their priestly office. What relief will come to human creation during the thousand-year reign of Christ? So this is a mm -hmm. parallel to enjoy life forever. Yeah. All right? At that time, the glorified sons of God, that means the 144,000 anointed, will be further revealed when they act as priests with Christ, there's priest, administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind. So it's saying that they're going to be working with Christ as priests, yeah. administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice. That's how they make people sinless. It's, it's, it's very similar to Catholicism. Except rather than have um, an official priesthood here on earth, like Catholic priests do, who wear, you know, black robes and dog collars, yeah. your priesthood is the 144,000 deceased, anointed Jehovah's Witnesses who've been turned into non-human spirit creatures. But they're mm -hmm. going to do what Catholics claim their priesthood do. Jehovah's forgiveness of sins will be... Yes, Jesus will forgive sins, but through the priesthood. Okay. So, where, where are we going with this? Are, are you are you trying to tell me that we've got things wrong, or what? Um, what are you? Well, what I I, I to? I've tried to explain to you that the Watchtower position. Is that the yeah. anointed Jehovah? So, 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 Robert, are you are you trying to convince me that the Watchtower is incorrect? Is I'm that, trying is to that your, no. I, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to explain to you what the Watchtower teaches. Are you, are you an elder? I am. Yes. Yeah, but you don't understand this. You don't understand Watchtower doctrine. I've studied this, and I'm trying to explain Watchtower yeah. doctrine to you. Yeah. So, so you can again, again, Robert, let me let me stop you because. Um, I am happy to help you understand what it says. Yeah. yeah. But it seems to me that your goal in our conversations is, is the opposite. You are trying to um, to convince me what you feel is, is correct. Um, I would be very happy to continue our conversations 
if you genuinely wanted to um, understand. And I'm not. I'm not. Um, that, but that but, I, but I'm the, the one who. Under, it should have done. But you I said at the start. Bob, Bob, you said at the start you don't under. There's no answer. You don't. You, uh, and and you were in. You don't understand Watchtower doctrine. I've just been trying to explain what the Watchtower teaches to you. Yeah. They believe that in the. Um, for instance, I hope it doesn't happen. But if Mister Hurd and Mister Let died today, I hope it doesn't happen. I wish no ill upon them. If Mr. Hurd and Mr. Lett died today, they would be resurrected, not as humans, but as non-human spirit creatures. And then Mr. Hurd and Mr. Lett, together with Judge Rutherford and Fred Franz, the other 144,000, during the millennium, they'll be resurrected as non-human spirit creatures. Unless they, I don't know when that resurrection is, perhaps it's immediate, I don't, I don't know, I need to look into that. But the thing is, they're going to be making, they'll be in heaven. But somehow, despite never meeting the ones resurrected to the earth, they're going to be working with Jesus, making those resurrected to the earth perfect and sinless. And that watchtower from 2012 says it's in their priestly function. Now, that is okay. almost identical to Roman Catholicism. And there's a verse in the scripture that explains this. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. Are you familiar with that verse? Um, not offhand, my memory of things like this is, is not as good as yours how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men for laying aside the commandment of god ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do you're, you're laying aside the bible for man-made teaching the only one who forgives sins and makes people sinless is jesus christ Mark chapter well, 2, I, verse I, I 10. I would say it's Jehovah God that, that um, forgives sins. Yes, on the basis, because it's... On it's, the basis of the sacrifice that, uh, that Jesus made. Yes, so, because in the New that's Covenant... Why, it's that's a, why we direct our, our communication, yep. our prayers to Jehovah through the name we say. We, we're saying this prayer through the name of Jesus Christ because it's only on the basis of what he's done for us, for mankind... That, that we can approach um, God in prayer. Um, I would agree, Bob, that yes, the Son makes a covenant with the Father, Hebrews nine twelve to 15. Mm. Yeah. That new covenant is the basis of my salvation, and that yeah. covenant is mediated to God's people by the Holy Spirit. So Father, Son, yeah. and the Holy Spirit mm. are active in different ways in the new covenant. You mm. say that you... Well, one, of the, one of the things I would, I would say to you, Bob, is that your... Uh, your knowledge and the way you're delving into the scriptures is is excellent. You know you have a very uh, a very good and uh, a, a quick mind, which um, I wish I wish I had an ability to remember chapter and verse um, the way you do. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not um, I'm not blessed with that. But um, it 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 seems to me that um, perhaps something that you might wish to, to concentrate on is if the scriptures are talking about these things happening and you know believing that there is a god and that he is interested in mankind and that these things are going to happen at some time in the future is you know how we personally and for the sake of our families position ourselves in such a way that we can benefit from these things that, um, um. that god is going to do that's the you, I'm, I'm trying you, to obey you, Jehovah you, God you, I'm trying to obey Jehovah that? God and do the will of Jehovah God do you believe that Jesus you say that you pray Sorry, to I, Jehovah I didn't catch that I didn't catch that Gosh, I, I try to obey Jehovah God and do the will of Jehovah God could I ask is Jesus Christ your friend do you believe you're a friend of Jehovah or can I ask are you a friend of Jesus I like to think that um, the way I act my life means that um, I am acceptable. Uh, the, the scriptures talk us, talk, tell, encourage us to draw close to Jehovah and um, to, to get to know him. So um, I'm mm. are attempting you, with my family to do that. Are you Jesus' friend? Um, again, we are encouraged to get to know him. We, we only know about God because of the record we have of Jesus on the earth and his teachings. And that's what he said, didn't he? He said, you, you, if you know me, you know my father. So, of course, we 
we follow Jesus' teachings and through that um, we understand Jehovah, his father, better. How can you be Jeho Jesus' friend if you won't even talk to him in prayer? Because all your no, prayers we, are addressed to Jehovah. That's correct, yes. So if Jesus is your friend, how can he be your friend when you refuse to talk to him in prayer? Uh, because all prayer goes to Jehovah. That's what Jesus taught. Um, yeah, but didn't didn't the Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, uh, on the Damascus Road, meet the risen Christ and talk to him? He did. Yeah, and as he journeyed, this is Mo uh, Acts 9.3, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he yeah. fell to and the ground he, and heard he a voice. A vision and, Jesus spoke to him. And, and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. That's right. Yeah, so that's what the account he, says. He, ad he addressed Jesus in prayer. Just, he just had like a Stephen conversation did. with Jesus through the vision that he experienced. So he addressed Jesus in prayer, just as Stephen, in, in the, at the end of Acts 7, also addressed Jesus. Mm hmm but you don't address Jesus in prayer. You we, say he's your friend, to, but you won't no, talk we, to we him. Don't, we don't pray to Jesus. We, we follow the model prayer, which um, you know, isn't a prayer to recite. It's just a, an example prayer. And um, Jesus said, pray to Jehovah, which is what we do. Where did Jesus say pray to Jehovah? I thought he said pray to the... You, you, you see, you keep making statements, but you never prove anything, Bob, from the Bible with respect. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've got one other question, which yeah. which bothers me. It's Acts chapter. It's not Acts. It's lesson lesson eight. You can be Jehovah's friend. On page thirty three, lesson eight. Uh, just one moment. Yep. Lesson. Thank you for your help. I'm asking my subscribers who live outside of the UK to please help me. I'm actually quite desperate for help because this work that I'm doing in evangelizing Jehovah's Witnesses and other cults has really come to an end here in the UK because everyone now knows about me. They've all been warned about me and it's very, very difficult now for me to find people who will actually talk to me. However, that situation can be resolved if people help me. All I'm asking people to do is to go to jw.org Scroll down to find a meeting, click on find a meeting, and then you can go to your part of the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, or the Caribbean. Any part of the English speaking world. Click on, it doesn't have to be near you, it could be any, any um, Jehovah's Witness congregation in your locality. Click on that congregation, phone them up, and just say you would like to attend a Jehovah's Witness meeting on Zoom and then copy down the details accurately. What's the name of the congregation? What's the town or the city? If it's in America, what's the state? I will need to know the time that they are on. For instance, if it's in Florida, it's going to be Eastern Standard Time. If it's in California, it's going to be Pacific Standard Time. So I need to know the name of the congregation, the town or city, the state, uh, and obviously the country, uh, the time that they are on, because I live in the UK and I need to make adjustments, and of course the time of the meeting. It doesn't have to be a Sunday meeting, it could be a midweek meeting. Now, please, I wish to make this very clear, I cannot possibly afford to change my phone contract and to phone outside of the UK. It's too expensive. Please don't contact me and send me long rambling explanations as how I can do this and that and the other and pay for this contract and that contract and then I can phone all over the world. I can't do it. However, Zoom calls cost me nothing. So if you give me accurate Zoom details, and they must be accurate, I can then log on free using Zoom to that Jehovah's Witness meeting and then get Bible studies in America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Caribbean, South Africa, if my subscribers help me. 
and I'm asking you to please help me because I cannot continue this work in the UK. Thank you.